new proposed legislation would make single Bitcoin address use a concern and possibly seen as money laundering. Welcome back, everyone. Let's let's dive into this uh, because, yeah, there is a lot to go through. Um, so here we go. That started off uh, for me with a tweet from Alex Gladstein. U.S. legislation has been drafted to classify not reusing Bitcoin addresses as mixing. That's right. Default functionality in a Bitcoin wallet is now or attempted to be seen as mixing. And we all know what mixing implies, right? It implies the nasty money laundering and the illicit activities, because we all know that privacy is a crime. Anyways, there's also efforts to force unhosted wallet providers to collect user info for taxes. So let's dive into this article that uh, Alex provided from coincenter.org. Comments to the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network on proposal of special measure regarding convertible virtual currency mixing as a class of transactions of primary money laundering concern. Words. The U.S. Patriot Act empowered FinCEN to designate four very different things as primary money laundering concerns, jurisdictions, financial institutions, classes of transactions, and types of accounts. This rulemaking is unprecedented because in the 23 years since the 311 power was created by Congress, it has never once been used by FinCEN to identify an entire class of transactions as a PMLC. PMLC stands for primary money laundering concern. Given the novelty of this type of, de of designation, there is no existing body of law to aid reporting entities in determining how the scope and limits of any given class of transactions should be understood. There is also no body of law to inform innocent Americans of their rights and opportunities for a hearing should their transactions be wrongly subjected to a PMLC designation. And should they suffer the serious collateral economic and reputational consequences that inevitably at attend such a designation. Therefore, this rule must be especially clear and narrow, narrowly tailored to avoid unintended consequences. As we discussed below, as drafted, it is not. And this is by design, right? This is completely by design. So something that I've noticed when it comes to legislation, and I'm not saying it's specific to this, but this is just what I've seen. Um, a very, uh, a wide net will be cast, and then it is up to the opposing factions to then create the, essentially the prison walls, right? So to speak, the rules. So you start to narrow it down. So it's, I don't know, to me, it, it's all malicious, right? It's all malicious. It's like they pretend that there's a problem. So then you want to make sure that they can't cast that wide of a net. So what you do is, is that you give them a very rigid definition and ergo, there's your prison. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, you gave us this. You told us this is what you were willing to agree with. Well, here it is. It's a slippery slope. It's anyways, it's such fuckery. Sorry. I don't find there is a better word to describe that than fuckery. Anyways, let's continue. So the particular definition chosen in order to designate a class of cryptocurrency transactions as a PMLC is notably broad, even by FinCEN's own account in this rulemaking. That breadth would baselessly tar many legitimate transactions on purpose, right? This is by design as criminal. The other type of designations available under Section 311 are self-limiting. A jurisdiction is a jurisdiction. An institution is an institution. A class of transactions, however is a metaphysical category with uncertain bounds. And that's why it's included in there. The proposed definition of CVC mixing, and for the people who don't know what CVC means, it is a convertible virtual currency mixing. Okay, that's what it stands for. Anyways, uh, includes six different broad but objectively definable ways of transacting using CVC, many of which are mere common practice amongst persons who know how to use cryptocurrency and wish to do so carefully. Even these broadly defined transaction types are not the actual limit to the definition. Any transaction made in a manner that obfuscates the source destination or amount involved is deemed a PMLC under the proposed rule. If that standard applies, 
to non-CBC transactions. Any transaction involving physical cash would be a PMLC. It effectively includes any transaction made with privacy. This is therefore not a rule that is triggered by a reasonably definable event. Now, I just want to point out again, that is done on purpose, right? Because essentially, uh, the institutions that put these rules in place, they want to have the power of control and the power to determine who wins and who loses. And you cannot do this with rigid defined rules. You can only do this with these kind of vaguely definable, like it's mentioned here, vaguely definable events where, well, yeah, you know, it's subject to interpretation and whoever can prove their case best, right? Like that, that's what it boils down to. So again, this is, this is all done on purpose and it is just absolute nonsense. We imagine these effects will be profound given that the PMLC designation carries real economic consequences for the persons whose transactions are designated. Such a financial account limits blocks and closures, as well as the moral condemnation and reputational harm that is likely to stem from being labeled a presumptive money launderer and criminal. The brief section dealing with potential adverse effects claims that there will be minimal adverse effects. Of course, of course, right? <laughs> it's, hey, we know what we're doing. Trust us. Trust us. On legitimate business activities involving CVC transactions. However, the only reasoning offered to support this conclusion is the claim that volatility and disruptions in the CVC ecosystem have been contained within the CVC markets and have not significantly spilled over to financial markets and infrastructures. This suggests that FinCEN does not perceive a disruption to the CVC ecosystem as significant unless that disruption spills over into larger traditional financial markets. Respectfully, an American who is making legitimate CVC mixing transactions in order to protect her own privacy is equal as in, is equally as entitled to fair treatment and the benefits of the rule of law as is a multinational corporation transacting in the larger, more traditional financial sectors. And again, right, just, just as in every other instance, mom and pop, they take the brunt of the pain. Okay, the larger corporations, they get to pay to play. You as an individual go to jail. You are tarred and feathered. Your reputation is ruined. You are put into the street. But if you're part of the, you know, the benevolent system, and you've checked off the right boxes, and you fulfill the adequate requirements, then hey, you get to be part of the chosen winners. It's fantastic. I wonder how they define legitimate business activities. Additionally, FinCEN concedes that it has failed to determine the extent to which or quantity thereof CVC mixing activity is attributed to legitimate business purposes. Of course, of course they can't quantify that shit. <laughs> it's so funny. Oh, it's such an embarrassment. Ah, most relevant to the statutory and constitutional limits binding on FinCEN, this rulemaking makes no effort to define a class of transactions such that it is appropriately limited to transactions within or involving a foreign jurisdiction. FinCEN concedes that support that reporting entities have no actual ability to determine the jurisdiction of a given CVC mixing transaction. FinCEN identifies this problem as the reason for no further limiting the category of PMLC transactions to only those involved North Korea or any similarly narrow approach, regardless of the actors involved. In spite of this admitted inability to discriminate, FinCEN specifies that reporting is only required when a reporting entity knows, suspects, or has reason to suspect that the transaction is foreign rather than domestic. If there is no actual way to know the jurisdiction of the transaction, one wonders upon which facts or clues a reporting entity will base this suspicion. The rulemaking is silent on that question. It means they have no clue. It means that whatever they determine to be this nefarious activity will simply just be the nefarious activity. And whoever they want to prosecute or whoever they are told to prosecute will in fact be prosecuted. While the Patriot Act does require FinCEN to weigh all of the alternative special measures in each rulemaking, the law does not give FinCEN the authority to use any of the special measures on transactions that are purely domestic 
All of the alternative measures reviewed by FinCEN in this rulemaking apply exclusively to transactions with or involving a foreign jurisdiction and therefore cannot encompass purely domestic transactions. To preserve the validity of this rulemaking, FinCEN should at least attempt to offer a definition of when a CVC mixing transaction should be deemed by the reporting entity to be within or involving foreign jurisdictions in order to ensure that only those transactions actually within or involving foreign jurisdictions are included in the reporting scheme. If this is impossible, then it is up to Congress to speak on the major question of whether the impossibility of limiting reporting obligations to foreign transactions should necessitate new statutory language that authorizes the designation of purely domestic transactions as a PMLC. Congress has never spoken on that question, and no statutory authority exists that allows FinCEN to do so. We urge FinCEN to engage in at least one further NPRM before any final rule is issued. That NPRM should discuss how reporting entities can make foreign versus domestic determinations and whether it is feasible to exclude purely domestic CVC transactions from reporting obligations. Such a further NPRM should disclose all non-public unclassified materials upon which its conclusions are based. Without such a subsequent NPRM, how will potentially affected Americans become fully aware of the many ways that they may be inappropriately swept into a PMLC report. Only by engaging in a further NPRM before a final rule with all with, with the American public to be able to offer comments on what will be for them the most consequential aspect of the rule as drafted. To fail to allow for public comment on such a consequential aspect of this rule would clearly show an arbitrary and capricious disregard for the strictures of the Patriot Act, the strictures of the Administrative Procedure Act, as well as extreme indifference to the legitimate liberty and property interests of all those Americans who would unfairly, extra-legally, and unconstitutionally uh, swept into a PMLC designation merely because they made a legitimate domestic CVC mixing transaction. Under the Fifth and 14th Amendments, the state may not deprive citizens of life, liberty, or property without notice and an opportunity for a hearing before a neutral magistrate. In determining whether a deprivation of property or liberty has occurred, the Supreme Court employs the test established in Matthews v. Eldridge. This test involves three factors. The private interest affected by the government action, the risk of an erroneous deprivation through the procedures used, and the probable value of additional or substitute procedures. And three, the government's interest, including the function involved and the fiscal and administrative burdens additional or substitute procedural requirements would entail. Applying this test to an American's designation as a PMLC, such a designation could satisfy the test for deprivation of property or liberty. The private interest involved is significant, as a PMLC designation can lead to severe economic and reputational harm. The risk of erroneous deprivation is substantial, especially in the case where the class of transactions to be designated is exceedingly broad and will include, by FinCEN's own admission, legitimate domestic transactions. A PMLC designation process for an entire class of transaction does not involve providing any specific notice to the actual affected parties or any opportunity for an evidentiary hearing as to the specific facts of the specific parties whose transactions end up being designated. In this case, there is no process for notifying and hearing from potentially designated parties whatsoever aside from the highly generalized rulemaking that will have concluded long before Many Americans have their transactions designated and their financial accounts flagged or even closed as a result. Many Americans have no idea that their otherwise legitimate transactions may, if this rulemaking is finalized, be on the wrong end of a PMLC designation. Many will only learn about such a designation after their accounts at a major financial institution has been flagged and closed. Indeed, many may not even learn about this designation process at all and will only be told that the reason their account was flagged and closed was some vaguely articulated concern over money laundering risk, if any reason is offered at all. <sighs> Guys, thanks for uh, thanks for sticking with me through that. That, that, was, uh, that was definitely a long read. Uh, but look... The takeaway from this, uh, for me, is again right. This this whole concept of um, essentially these institutions uh, cast a wide net 
and then essentially we pick the or 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 through a series of conversations we end up uh in a compromise right where we have a hand in in picking our poison okay so and and this all falls under the guise right of uh, essentially um of making sure that the financial system is is stable and and more importantly right that any kind of these mixing services don't negatively impact the traditional financial markets the, f- the hubris that we deal with okay it, it's it's one of the strangest things so essentially essentially what it is okay we've seen this time and time again we have seen our markets collapse we have seen circuit breakers be put in place all because all because humans don't want to admit that they are engineering all of this okay so the reality is is that the traditional markets they're already flawed okay and they're already full of risk which only the retail investor is to take on but but the thing is this the messaging every time every time something new is to be implemented you it's good to remind you of how what's really happening here is these institutions right like like fincen these organizations they're looking out for my best interest they're looking out for your best interest first and that's always what they need you to believe why because that feels good right it it feels good and then you're going to make a decision based on that feeling and you're going to say well they're looking out for my best interest and and of course using fluffy terminology like the greater good you know i'm pretty sure that a person whose account gets wrongfully flagged and closed and now possibly cannot pay their bills or feed their family i don't think that they're seeing this as uh, the greater good anyways guys yep very uh very crazy stuff we are paying attention to this uh unfortunately this is not a feel good clip this is more of a we need to be paying attention clip and guys that does it for us this is what i wanted to talk about today i am going to catch you next week <laughs>